John Carter of Mars, the forgotten Martian pulp magazine superhero, explored in detail. John Carter of Mars, the inspiration for several famous sci-fi films like Avatar, Star Wars, and even Dune, spent close to 80 years in movie developmental hell. John Carter's is the quintessential sci-fi story, a world enriched with otherworldly creatures, a superhero-like protagonist, and a beautiful love interest. And yet, upon the release of Disney's John Carter in 2012, a century after its first publication in a gritty pulp magazine, the film tanked. Keep watching to learn more about the enigmatic character of John Carter and his adventures on the planet of Barsoom, and how its movie adaptation suffered from the perilous consequences of being too late. In this video, we will explore John Carter, his origin story, the fascinating animals of Barsoom, and deep dive into Dejah Thoris, his Martian wife. But before we begin, please consider subscribing to us. It may be a small click from you, but it goes a long way for us. Let's begin, shall we? Disney's John Carter of Mars The film opens with an airborne battle scene between the cities of Helium and Zodanga in the middle of a red desert, and we learn that the planet of Mars we believe to be devoid of air and life, is actually Barsoom and thriving with life. And while it may not be a dead planet yet, it was dying. Just as Zodanga's leader, Sabthan, is cornered on his battleship, three cloaked figures appear from sky destroying the Helium soldiers and providing Sabthan with a powerful weapon that can wipe out armies in a flash. We are then led to New York City in 1881, where Edward Burroughs reaches New York City to find his uncle John Carter dead and his body kept in a tomb that can be opened only from the inside. Amongst his estate and wealth, Carter also leaves his personal journal with Ned. This is where our adventure begins. My dear Edgar. In 1869, John Carter trying to escape the Union's Colonel Powell is caught in the middle of a gunfight between Powell's soldiers and a band of Apaches. Carter escapes with a wounded Powell and stumbles upon the cave filled with gold he had been looking for. A cloaked Thern appears out of nowhere, and in the ensuing fight, Carter shoots the Thern. As the Thern tries to escape using his medallion, Carter snatches it and is in turn transported to Barsoom. Due to different bone density and Barsoom's lower gravity, Carter discovers he can jump exceptionally high and can perform feats of strength considered impossible. As he is discovering these new abilities, he is captured by the Green Martian Tharks and their Jeddak, Tars Tarkas. These four-handed green creatures are true representatives of the harsh lives one must lead on a planet that is dying. They kill the hatchlings that don't hatch in time and mothers have to snatch a newborn upon their arrival from the nest if they want to rear a child at all. Theirs is a race of brutality from birth. While Carter is taken slave, the cities of Helium and Zodanga have reached a ceasefire, under the condition that the Helium princess, DJ Thoris, marries Sabthan. He is a monster. DJ he is on the verge of harnessing the Ninth Ray, the power Sabthan uses, and is vehemently against the Union. She escapes and is rescued by Carter, who believes she could be another human. Upon witnessing Carter destroy the Zodanga ships, Tars Tarkas names him Dodar Sujut, his right-hand man. That night, Carter and Dija, in a bid to make the other believe in their story and cause respectively, enter the temple of goddess Isis, where entry is forbidden for anyone who isn't Thark. Sola runs after them to warn them of the same. The three are found by the Tharks. Instead of killing them, Tar Tarkas lets them escape to the sacred river where they can find a way for Carter to get back to Earth. At a spot in the river, they discover that the medallion is powered by the Ninth Ray, which also powers Sabthan's weapon. Before they can decipher the transcription that will help Carter transport back to Earth, they are attacked by Tharks under the Thern Matai Shang's direction. In the ensuing fight between Carter and the Tharks, we discover that he had decided never to participate in a war because he had lost his wife and child to it. Begrudgingly, Dija agrees to marry Sabthan and instructs Carter on using the medallion to get back to Earth. Carter, however, decides to stay but is captured by Shang, who reveals that Thurns are not sent by the goddess as the Martians believe. 
They are eternal creatures that manipulate civilizations of different worlds to bring them to their doom, and feed off the planet's resources. Wula, a Kalo Carter had befriended while living with the Tharks, attacks Shang and helps him escape. Armed with the knowledge that Sab then will kill Dija on the eve of their wedding, Carter plans to recruit the Tharks' help to attack Sodanga. Upon arrival, he discovers Tal Hages has taken over the Tharks. Carter and an injured Tarkas are thrown into an arena with two white apes as the Tharks watch. Carter manages to kill both the white apes and challenges Tal Hages for the title of the Tharks' leader. He slays Tal Hages in one clean swoop as the Tharks cheer him on. Carter's army charges on Helium. Sab then is killed, and the Zodongan army loses the battle. Carter and Dija get married, and Carter throws away his medallion, deciding to stay in Barsoom forever. Matai Shang re-emerges as a soldier and sends Carter back to Earth. Carter spends several years on Earth digging and searching for one of the medallions as he remembered Shang mentioning Thurns, inhabited Earth as well. The journal mentions him having found the medallion and his death just being a result of transporting back to Barsoom. He entrusts Ned with protecting his body. A frantic Ned rushes to Carter's tomb and figures out the clue to open it. Just as the door opens, a Thern appears behind Ned but is shot before he can harm Ned. Turns out Carter had never found another medallion. He had, however, known that a Thern had been keeping tabs on him. So, he devised a plan to lure the Thern out and steal his medallion to return to Barsoom. As Carter returns to Barsoom, he entrusts Ned to take care of his body on Earth, because if his body on Earth dies, so does his copy on Barsoom. The 2012 live-action adaptation was the first and only successful attempt at bringing Burroughs Barsoom to the big screen despite several failed attempts by multiple major studios dating back to the 1930s. The film was director Andrew Stanton's live-action debut. Before this, he had directed animated Pixar classics like Finding Nemo and Wally. -E. John Carter is an entertaining adventure with its cool hero and tragic backstory, a beautiful and engaging love interest, and an abundance of special effects. The world of Barsoom, created by Stanton and his effects team with the utmost care, reels you in and keeps you invested. Although the plot may get convoluted at times, with too many details to keep track of, the train never truly leaves the tracks with this one. With competent acting from the two main leads, Taylor Kitsch and Lynn Collins, the movie hits all the usual sci-fi beats. However, that may have been the very reason for its lousy reception. By the time John Carter was released, several other sci-fi adventure films had already done everything it was trying to do. While most of these movies were inspired by Burroughs Barsoom series, it was John Carter that ended up looking like a ripoff. The movie is pulpy in its essence and gets a bad rep from those who may not understand the fast-paced, violent and scandalous world of pulp fiction. While it may seem like the movie has nothing new to offer, it's a great watch for someone who loves sci-fi as it had originated in pulp magazines, full of grit, grime, and violence, with a romantic arc at its beating heart. Barsoom's Incredible Creatures Any sci-fi world is incomplete without its unique flora and fauna. The desert planet of Barsoom doesn't have much in the form of plants, but its animals are ferocious monsters. Animals in Barsoom are hairless for the most part due to the planet's dry air and lack of water bodies. Like the people of Barsoom, all creatures on the planet have blue blood. Without further ado, let's explore the animals from Barsoom. Number 1, Thoat. In the Disney movie, the first creature we encounter is the Thoat, saddled and ridden by the Tharks as they chase Carter. Thoats are huge hairless creatures with thick wrinkly skin resembling a bull. They are supported by eight thick legs that fade from slate to a yellowish color towards the bottom of their feet that are flat and nailless. Thoats have two tusks right above their mouth, that is huge enough to look like it's splitting their face in half. Their tusks are believed to be used for defense. They are primarily used as riding beasts by the people of Barsoom. Number 2, Kalo. A Kalo is the Martian equivalent of a dog that is usually only domesticated by the green men of Barsoom. They have a stubby lizard-like body with ten short legs. 
They are the fastest animals on Barsoom, with the ability to run up to 250 miles per hour. They have a heightened sense of smell and use their three rows of shark-like razor-sharp teeth to devour their prey by peeling off the skin and meat. It is said that Kalos will eat just about anything. Once domesticated, Kalos are incredibly loyal to their masters and excellent watchdogs. In the movie, while John Carter is held captive with the newly hatched Tharks, Woola, a guard Kalo, is tasked to keep an eye on him. Woola can easily keep up with Carter's high jumps that cover considerable distances thanks to his speed. Woola, who was initially domesticated by the brutish Tharks, eventually becomes Carter's loyal pet because he is the first person to ever show the creature any compassion. Woola also manages to attack Matai Shang and save Carter from being shipped off to a containment facility towards the end of the film. Number 3, Banth. Banth is a many-legged predator from Barsoom. They hunt in the low hills near the long-dead seas of Barsoom and have large sinewy bodies packed with solid muscle. Hairless for the most part, Banth sport a short mane on their necks. They have a protruding jaw with razor-like sharp teeth that aid in hunting along with their sharp claws. Although the creature never graces the screen during John Carter's runtime, its snarling head can be seen carved onto the Tharkstoat saddles. Number 4, White Ape. White apes are gorilla-like monstrous creatures that drive fear into people's hearts across Barsoom. These blind nocturnal creatures loom way three times above the people of Barsoom. They have six limbs that can be utilized as either arms or legs. They have short bristly white hair across their forearms and shoulder blades. The most prominent features on their face are their big nostrils and a huge jaw lined with two short but sharp teeth in the middle, and two long canines at the corner on both sets of jaws. Surviving an encounter with a white ape is considered so difficult that all Jeddaks across Barsoom wear mantles made of their hair, as a show of power. In the film, John Carter wins the Thark support by killing two white apes in the arena where it was assumed he and Tars Tarkas would die, at the hands of the white apes. The white ape shares likeness with George, one of the monsters appearing in the movie, Rampage. George is a four-limbed giant monkey that has sharp teeth and bristly hair across its forearms, shoulders and atop its head. Deja Thoris, John Carter's princess wife. Deja Thoris is as prominent as John Carter in the Barsoom series. In Burroughs' text, Deja Thoris is the princess of Helium, born to Morris Kajok, Jeddak of Lesser Helium. She later marries John Carter and has two children, Cartharis and Tara, and a granddaughter named Lana by Tara and Gayan of Gathal. Deja has a slender, girlish figure in the books, with an oval face framed by coal-black, waving hair. She has light reddish copper skin and is usually dressed in minimal clothing but is covered in ornaments. While she may not be a trained fighter, she is neither a damsel in distress. She has saved her husband John Carter's life on at least one occasion. When captured by the Tharks while leading a scientific expedition, she spoke bravely and eloquently for herself and was even willing to sacrifice herself to save her city. She is also an understanding wife who, instead of getting jealous or angry, gently nudges the broken-hearted women who take a liking to her husband towards other eligible men in Helium, a city brimming with adventurous young red men. In the 2009 low-budget film, A Princess of Mars, produced by Asylum, Deja is played by Tracy Lords, whose blonde hair didn't help with Deja's characterization at all. Basu. The 2012 Disney film, John Carter, got her portrayal correct by casting Lynn Collins. Her character was also updated to become the lead scientist at Helium, working to find a method to harness the Ninth Ray. In addition, she was the daughter of Tardos Moors, instead of being his granddaughter, and was a trained warrior for the city of Helium. She has also been a prominent and recurring character in Dynamite comics since 2010 across several series based on Mars. In this non-canon series, she is born to Haru, the princess of Seth, thus making her the granddaughter of Hath, the Jeddak of Seth. John Carter's print debut in a magazine serial. John Carter was first documented in a serialist novel, Under the Moons of Mars in the All Stories pulp magazine from February to July 1912. Written by Edgar Rice Burroughs, John Carter was the lead character in this novel set on Barsoom, a fictionalized version of the planet Mars. 
It was later turned into a complete novel after the success of Burroughs' Tarzan series. The novel was retitled to its more popular name, A Princess of Mars, for its 1917 hardcover publication. In the novel, Carter is described as an immortal 6 feet 2 inches tall man with close-cropped black hair and steel-gray eyes. Carter appears in several subsequent volumes of the series, which spans over 12 books. John Carter's Comic Book Origin John Carter first appeared in a comic book in 1939 in the Funnies 30th edition. After this, he became a comic book staple. No matter which turns the story took, John Carter was always portrayed as a 30-year-old man who regrets his past and found a chance at redemption in his Martian wife, Deja Thoris, and his life at Barsoom. Different comic versions of John Carter and other characters from Barsoom portrayed them in personalities, ranging from chivalrous to savage, depending upon the comic trends of the time. John Carter possesses enhanced strength and agility, telepathic abilities, telepathic immunity, the ability to interstellar astral travel, impressive combat skills, horsemanship, aviation and linguistic skills, and an indomitable will, across all comic interpretations. He was also ignorant of Martian customs initially, had an alien appearance for Martians, was impatient and impertinent, and lacked understanding of women and how to deal with them. I understood you. While most of the major story arcs remained the same as the 2012 Disney film, some significant differences were noted amongst all comic book versions of John Carter. While running away from the Apaches, John is paralyzed as he escapes into a cave where he is split from his body and travels to the Red Star of Mars. He is named Dodor Sujut after the Tuthark chieftains he killed in combat. John Carter's transportation back to Earth also occurs differently in the comics. The operators of the atmosphere factory die, leading to thinning of the Martian air and increasing deaths of Barsoom's inhabitants. John Carter manages to open the doors of the atmosphere factory. However, he loses his life in the process. Carter wakes up in his body on Earth in the Arizona cave from where he had been transported to Mars. When he finally managed to return to Mars, just like the 2021 movie, he entrusted his nephew Edgar to protect his body stored in a special tomb that can only be opened from the inside. Is the franchise dead? The world of Barsoom may not hit the big screens anytime soon, but insider Daniel Richman has reported that Disney is working on a John Carter of Mars reboot series rumored to be for its online streaming platform Disney+. Plus. The series won't be connected to the 2012 movie in any way. It'll focus more on the Barsoom series. I'm John Carter. War on Mars. While not much information is available on the Disney reboot series, John Carter will grace screens in May 2022 in the upcoming video game John Carter, Warlord of Mars, where he will be sharing the screen with Ian Fleming, creator of James Bond. The action game is being published by FNCPR Limited after receiving licensing rights from Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated. The game will be available on PC and console platforms, thus bringing the historic sci-fi world of Barsoom to modern homes across the globe. That was all for this video. Stay around for more exciting content about sci-fi and horror pop culture. Stay face and have a good one.